Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are going to look at solving inequalities. Um, these are going to be two-step inequalities in most cases, but basically what we're going to do is isolate the variable and solve. We have to remember the property of equality. Whatever you do to one side of an equation, you would do to the other side of an equation. Now, we are working with inequalities today, so it's the same exact property, except whatever you do to one side of an inequality, you're going to do to the other side. Now, there's a little bit of a difference, and I'll show you the only exception to that rule, but that's what the property of equality is, and we're going to apply it to inequalities today. So to get the variable by itself, you use the inverse or the opposite operation, um, and we'll see that as well. Now this is what I talked about, what makes an inequality different? The only thing that makes an inequality, solving an inequality, different than solving for an equation is that when you multiply or divide by a negative number, the sign will change, the inequality sign. And I'll show you why that is. If we have this inequality here, 3 is greater than negative 10. That's pretty straightforward. 3 is definitely bigger than negative 10. That's a true statement. Now, what happens if we multiply both sides by negative 1? So I'm going to take 3 times negative 1 and negative 10 times negative 1. So I'm multiplying both sides of the inequality by negative 1. Well, 3 times negative 1 gives me negative 3, and negative 10 times negative 1 gives me a positive 10. Is the statement true anymore? Negative 3 is greater than 10? No, that's not true. So you can see with this simple illustration that whenever you multiply or divide both sides of an inequality times a negative number, only when you're multiplying or dividing times a negative number, that sign has to switch to make sure that it's still a true statement. We switch the sign, that is a true statement. We're good to go. So we'll see that in a couple of the examples that we do today, but basically that's the only difference um, between solving an inequality and solving an equation. Um, you're going to use all the same other properties, it's just that when you multiply or divide by negative, then the sign will change. All right, so let's go ahead and solve a couple of these inequalities using those rules. I'm going to start off, um, here I'll start off by adding 5 to both sides of this inequality. When we're adding 5, we don't do anything abnormal. It's the same exact thing. We don't have to switch the sign or anything like that. So we would have 4x on the left side, and it remains greater than 3 plus 5, which is 8. And now I'm going to divide both sides of this inequality by 4. Now I'm dividing by a positive number, so my inequality sign is going to remain the same. All right, 4x divided by 4 gives me 1x, or in other words, x. 8 divided by 4 is 2, so my final solution is anything I put into that inequality where x is greater than 2 is going to give me a true answer. You can check using the most absurd numbers ever. You could check using 1 million. Is 4 times 1 million minus 5 going to be greater than 3? Well, let's see, 4 million, oh my goodness, minus 5 is greater than 3. Of course it is. I mean, you take 5 away from 4 million, and you're going to get this huge number. It's still very much greater than 3. Any number greater than 2 is going to give you a true statement when you plug it in for x. Now let's solve this inequality here. Let's go ahead and we're going to start out by subtracting 4 from both sides of this inequality. 4 minus 4 is 0, and that's going to leave us with negative 3y on the left side of the inequality, and negative 26 minus 4 will give us negative 30 on the right side of this inequality. And subtracting is not the same as multiplying or dividing by a negative, that we did do something that was negative, but we still don't switch the signs because we were just subtracting from both sides of the inequality. 
Now in this step, we're going to need to divide by negative 3. And this is when that rule that we talked about comes into play. We're dividing by a negative number, negative 3. So what we need to do, they'll cancel out, and we end up with just y on this side. Negative 30 divided by negative 3 will give us a positive 10, and we have to switch our sign. So when we go back, y has to be greater than 10. Anything we put in there that's greater than 10 will give us a true statement. Okay? Anything less than 10, or I mean, that's not going to work. But if y is greater than 10, then this will be a true statement. Okay? And we can check using any number that's greater than 10, and you'll see that it is a true statement. All right, let's go ahead and solve a couple more before we run out of time. This one here has two variables, or two terms, I'm sorry, with variables. So I'm going to start out by just highlighting the, the like terms, 7b and 3b, noticing that I have to keep that negative with the 3. So 7b minus 3b will give me 4b plus 4 is greater than negative 12. Now I can work on starting to actually solve this inequality. I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides of the inequality. I do that because it's the opposite of adding 4, and that's the inverse operation that we talked about earlier. So 4 minus 4 is 0. That leaves me with 4b on the left side of that inequality. 12, negative 12 minus 4 gives me negative 16. Now I'm going to divide both sides of this inequality by 4. Again, I'm dividing by 4 because 4 times b, that's what 4b means. So if I divide by 4, then they cancel out, and I'm left with just b by itself, which is what I want. I want to isolate b by itself on one side of this inequality, and negative 16 divided by 4 leaves me with negative 4. Notice in this question, I divided by a positive number. The sign remained the same. It's still a greater than sign. And I don't change that when I divide or multiply by positive numbers, or when I add or subtract. The only time the sign changes is when you multiply or divide by a negative number. All right. And the challenge question at the end where we have um, our variable on both sides of this inequality. So we're going to go ahead and solve that one. To do this, it's going to take one extra step. My first step is, I'll do it in a different color, just kind of give us some variety, is that I'm going to subtract 5n from both sides of this equation, of this inequality, I should say. So if I'm subtracting 5n from both sides of this inequality, 5n minus 5n cancels it out on the right side, and I'm left with all my n values over on the left side, 2n Take away 5n will give me negative 3n. Everything else remains exactly the way it was. All right. Again, the 5n minus 5n, that it gives you 0. So that I got rid of the n value from the left side, or from the right side of this inequality, which is exactly what I was trying to do. My next step, I'm going to try and get rid of that, that value of 6 there, the negative 6. So to do that, I'm going to have to add 6 to both sides of this inequality. When I add 6 to both sides, I'm left with 3n on the left, greater than or equal to 24 plus 6 is 30. Whoa, that looks like 36. It is actually 30. Now I'm going to divide both sides of this inequality by negative 3. And I do that so that I can isolate the n by itself. I'm trying to isolate that variable, get the variable all by itself. Three n, negative 3n divided by negative 3. The negative 3 cancel out, and I'm left with n by itself on the left side. And 30 divided by negative 3 will give me a negative 10. Now, this is a situation where I'm dividing by a negative number, so the sign has to switch directions. So instead of being greater than or equal to, it will become less than or equal to. And that would be my final answer. n is less than or equal to negative 10. Any values, negative 10 or lower, will tr give me a true statement if I plug it into the original equation. And that's how you deal with solving two-step inequalities.